Welcome to the Italian Nationality Room at the University of Pittsburgh. This room was dedicated in the 1940s. Its latest dedication occurred in 1948 with the addition of a painting described later. The room functions as a university classroom during fall and spring semesters. At all times of the year, it is used for tourism as well. As I describe the room and virtually move your attention through it, I will also touch upon some ancillary aspects so that you may wish to tour here when the facilities are available, or you may wish to investigate some of the byways that consideration of this room will bring up. As we enter the Italian room, we see a space that is reminiscent of an Italian ecclesiastical interior. The ceiling is based upon the ceiling of San Domenico in Pissarro, Tuscany, Italy. The students' walnut benches are inspired by church pews, and the chalkboard cabinet is similar to the vestment cabinet for a priest, called an armadio. Besides the religiously inspired architecture, we also see some hallmarks of the Renaissance era, and indeed, that is the intended era of this room. The austere plaster work plays off of the gray limestone. In the Renaissance, the similarly colored gray sandstone was known as Pietra Serena. The investigations into the classical past in Italy nearly 600 years ago fired the imaginations of designers and architects, and so we see in this room the early Renaissance is echoed in the judicious use of Greco-Roman decorative carvings in the wood and the stone, and in the harmony caused by architectural symmetry. The names of prominent Italians from the 12th through the early 20th centuries feature above the front and rear woodwork, made to look like choir stalls. The names are not all in chronological order, but fairly close to it. The earliest name is San Francesco, or Francis of Assisi, while the next oldest is Dante Alighieri, whose bust sits atop the Armadio. A who's who of famous artists and writers dominate the list, but there is room for musicians, such as Verdi, and scientists, such as Galvani and Marconi. I'd like to especially mention Botticelli, the 15th century painter of religious and mythological paintings. Some of his famous works, such as The Birth of Venus, were among the first large-scale European paintings done on canvas. That was a big move in the history of art materials. The music you will hear at the end of this video is the lovely Birth of Venus by Ottorino Respighi, one of three musical portraits of his Tritico Botticelliani, or three Botticelli pictures. I invite you, when you can visit our campus, to see an excellent and materially accurate copy of this work in the Frick Fine Arts Building Cloister. Flanking the fireplace are two chairs called Savonarola chairs. These chairs are of an ancient design, but bear the name of a Dominican friar, Girolamo Savonarola, who acquired political control of Florence after the first expulsion of the Medici family. Savonarola ordered a destruction of profane objects, and this ran counter to the humanist movement that went hand in hand with the Renaissance period as we now comprehend it. So compelled were people to save their souls that they burned their fine books, clothing, cosmetics, and paintings upon what were called bonfires of the vanities. Even Botticelli did so with some of his paintings and came to regret it. If anyone is familiar with Tom Wolfe's 1980s novel of the same name, this is the event from which he took the title. Eventually, Savonarola lost clout when his apparent opposition to the Pope caused his arrest. He subsequently was executed. How ironic that these attempts to turn back the humanist intellectual movement with fires are shown here, flanking a fireplace. The fireplace is a donation. It is a 15th century object. Another name to consider is Tiziano, or as we will call him in the United States, Titian. Titian was a nearly exact contemporary of Michelangelo, but the Venetian artist's paintings could not be more different from Michelangelo. Whereas Michelangelo created archetypes of humanity, Titian was specific, creating many portraits of the people of his day. The most notable difference is one which touches upon the technology of painting, and it continues to this day. Titian, being from northern Italy, had the benefit of trade with the northern lowlands countries. It was Netherlandish artists who first brought the perfection of drying oils to painting. 
oils such as linseed, walnut, and safflower. This was a revolution in the way artists could portray how sight actually works, with a single focus and blurry edges, a depth of field that with Florentine painting, expert as it was in fresco and egg tempera panel painting, could not easily represent. Eventually, the examples of the Venetians, using access to drying oils to a great degree, and also due to their climate not being conducive to fresco painting, supplanted the earlier hard-edged look of fresco, but especially of egg tempera. No interpretation of this room would be accurate, though, if we do not consider that until 1948, there were only these names set in wood. All are men. The first director of the nationality rooms, Ruth Crawford Mitchell, a graduate of Vassar College, remembered an Italian woman portrayed there in a window. Recalling this, she and the committee commissioned Giovanni Romanoli to paint a picture of Helena Cornaro Pascopia, the first European woman to earn master's and doctorate degrees. She did so from the University of Padua in 1678. The degrees were in philosophy. She wanted to study theology, but that was disallowed, and so she went with philosophy. Padua University is one of the schools shown in the bench backs. All have the years in which the university was chartered in their city. Padua's came about in 1222. The painting and the benches remind us how much history precedes us and how we build upon it, make education more available, and see to it that all members of society have access to it. That does seem to appeal to the senses of harmony and rebirth of knowledge. Images at the end of this video show Mr. Romanoli's red chalk study made of the model for Helena Pascopia, Botticelli's Birth of Venus, and paintings by Titian in Michelangelo for comparison. I hope you will experience what we have here at Pitt and that it enhances your knowledge.